Oh, I actually got a repeat because I wasn't recording, but... Okay, so... For Juno, um, on WeChat I've linked um, Excel Basics and Formula, which is um, another teacher's overview of how to use Excel from the University of Central Florida. Um, it's a little bit handholdy though, um, so if you want to use it as a reference guide, you can. Um, it goes over what everything's called in English and how you can uh, create your first Excel sheets and that sort of thing. Um, but I feel like you guys are um, much more advanced than what this is really designed to teach for. Um, if you can use Word, you probably don't need me to explain most of this. So instead, I'm going to take a look at a couple things that I use Excel for. Okay, and I'll start here. Um, so I'm going to recreate this whole thing from scratch, but what this is is um, this is a retirement planning document that basically does all of our compound interest for us all in one sheet. Um, so I'm going to start out just okay. labeling this. So this is compound interest. Um, then I'm going to highlight um, the fields that I'm going to make my table for. So for all of these fields, um, hit insert, go to table, and then mark that your table has headers. That makes the first line um, all of these um, labels instead of data. And I'm going to name these. This is account name, principal, interest rate. I'm hitting tab to move to the next one. Times compounded, year 5, year 10, year 15, year 20, year 25, year 30. And then years to mature and the user is going to be able to type whatever they want there. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't have Excel, but I have the Libra office calculation. I think it's the same thing, basically. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's able to do most of what we'll be doing today. Um, I don't know if the uh, Office Libra can do curve fitting yet. Um, if you have a Google account, um, your Google Drive has access to Excel for free. Um, and okay. you can use that if you want to. Uh, like online? Right, um, let me see if I can pull it up really quick. <clears throat> okay, so if you go to drive.google.com. We'll see if we can open up an Excel document here. Okay, so I've got this one for just a list of emotes. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Google will open it in its own version of Excel, and you can do just about everything in here if you need to online. And um, where where is that again? Um, so go to drive.google.com. Um, yeah, and, and then um, you can add any files that you want to your drive. So if you add an Excel document and then just try to open it, um, you can open it directly through Google Drive. Um, how do I get this comment? Um, how do you get, say again? The Excel document. How do you get the Excel document? Um, I've got a couple that I've sent through WeChat. Um, uh, okay. Let's try opening this dis1.csv and we'll see if that works. So now I upload a file dis.csv. And where do the uh, where do I upload the file? Okay. Uh, just upload anywhere to your drive. Okay, 
Okay, after it uploads, if you hover over where it says upload complete, you should see a folder icon that says show file location. That'll jump to wherever the file is and just double click it and it should hopefully open for us. Where can, where can I search my computer files to upload? Um, okay, let me go back. Um, on Google Drive, if you go to oh, I, new I on the top left and file upload, um, and you can navigate through your computer to upload any files you want. Okay. What was the file name again? Um, dis.csv. <clears throat> This is a quick listing of Disney's share prices over the past uh, 250 days. Okay, so if you double click that, you should be able to see it open in um, Google Sheets. Okay, I'm done. I can use it. Uh... Right. As Google Sheets or Excel Viewer Editor or for Drive? Um, uh, I'm going to try both because I've never done an Excel Viewer before. Let me s we'll see if either of these can open up the graphs as well. And then? Mm. Okay, so did you open it up with uh, Google Drive, or or did you try Excel Viewer? Excel Viewer. Okay, um, so I'm gonna have to choose a document to open. Nope, oh, sorry, I'll get an authorize. Then I'm going to open a file from my drive. But I, I, I don't find my file anymore when it says Select the Excel file from your computer, but I don't find it. I'm not really sure what your file structure is on Linux, unfortunately. Um, do you have a way that you can search for DIS? It just shows like folders from other stuff, but not like single files. Okay, let's break out then. Um, see if you can open a file from Google Drive um, and open your DIS file that way. Uh, external. Oh. <clears throat> Never mind. Um, so it's saying their uh, Google Drive link is broken at the moment. We have to upload directly. All right. I'm going to try this on my end really quick. Um, okay. It doesn't support that file format. So let me try again. Excel workbook instead. I'm going to re-upload that as the file format at once. We'll see if that works. Okay, so on WeChat I just re-uploaded it um, as an Excel file instead of a CSV file. Okay. We'll see if that works. Okay, 
Yeah, there we go. So that will allow you to at least view everything that I'm doing. Um, okay, well, it works. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to break out of all this. Actually, I wonder if Microsoft has a way to do Office Online as well. I believe they do. Um, do you own Microsoft Office? Uh, I think so. I'll bet that's how you're supposed to do this in Linux. Office. Office Online. Okay, um, I don't think I'm going to do this for just because of time today, um, but I might check it out next class period. Um, but I think this is how you're supposed to do this on Linux um, if you don't have Excel downloaded to your computer directly. Um, there's an option to use your Office account um, if you have an Office subscription um, online, which will allow you to do it directly through your browser to edit any documents that you want. Um, okay. Anyways, so I'm going to go back to our Excel book. Um, so this account name, um, the user can fill in. That's going to be whatever they type in, principal, interest rate as well, number of times compounded. Um, but then I'm going to need to use those in formulas um, for our years. Um, so in order to make a formula, um, just hit an equal sign, and then I'll start you to type a formula. Um, if you hold shift and click a field, then that will put that in as a variable. So for instance, if I want this to mature in year five, um, I would need to take my principal, so I'm going to hit shift, click, and that takes whatever the principal is. I'm going to multiply um, times one plus my interest rate, shift, click. Interest rate divided by my shift, click, number of times compounded, raised to the parentheses, number of times propounded again, times five in this case, and then close that parentheses. Okay, then I'm going to hit control A and control C to copy that. Um, so I can move that into um, my next field. Okay, so if I type in something right now, oops. Okay, if I type in something right now for my principal, so let's say I'm starting with $10,000 at a 15% interest rate compounded four times per year. Um, then year five automatically fills in. And I can change these interest rates, and it will automatically update that field. That's okay. because we've stored everything as a variable. OK, so I'm just going to copy paste into these other fields, but just change that last five to the number of years that we want. Um, if you. If you hit tab, that'll move you to the next uh, table. So after I type that, 15, I think tab, it moves me to the 20 bar. I'm just going to paste again, change that 5 to 20, hit tab again, um, and just keep changing these to the years that they need to be, 25 and 30. OK, um, so I could type in any principle we want, 46,000 to match what I've got at top. Compounding at an 11% interest rate four times per year um, gives me the same values that I had originally when I calculated this by hand. Um, for year 5 through 30. Okay, so let's say um, I want the user to be able to type um, how many years they want it to mature and then figure out the value after that many years. Um, so what we can do is we can use a little bit of calculus um, to rewrite this formula. So this is our account is our principal times 1 plus our interest rate over n to the nt power. I'm going to divide both sides by p and take the natural log of, or take the logarithm of both sides. So this is log base a of b equals c, and then divide both sides by n. And I'll get a general form for the um, 
number of years it takes an investment to mature is log base 1 plus r over n of a over p divided by n. Okay, so I'm going to take this formula and we're going to write it in Excel um, to do this automatically for us um, based on the values that we've typed in. So let me do that really quick. Um, so here for years to mature, I'm going to throw in whatever we want. So maybe 17 for now. Value after two years. Um, I'm going to hit um, insert function um, and then type a description of what I want. So I'm going to type logarithm or log. Okay, and you can see I've got lots of options here. Um, if you hover over them, it'll tell you what um, your inputs are. So in this case, this takes a logarithm of a number and a base, and it returns the logarithm of the number and base you specify. Um, so I'm going to use that logarithm. Okay, my number um, is a over p. So this is my um, I'm doing the wrong one, aren't I? Oops. This is how many years I want to reach the goal. Okay, I'm in the wrong field. So let me do that again. Number of years to reach the goal. Um, so I want my account balance, um, which is whatever my maturity goal is going to be. So I'm gonna, again, hold shift and click maturity goal. Um, so it'll fill that in as a variable. And then I'm going to do divide by our principal, this, that's how much we started with. So I'll scroll back over to principal, hold shift and cross click. You can see maturity goal divided by principal is now my number, A over P. Okay, for my base, I want one plus R over N. So that's one plus our interest rate, shift click, um, puts that in as a variable, um, divided by the number of times compounded, N. Okay, um, and you can see I've got our formula that's filling up here um, for our field. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, I'm not quite done because I do need to divide by this extra n. Um, so I'm going to click in that field, scroll all the way to the end, um, and just divide that logarithm by n one more time. So I'll scroll over to number of times compounded, shift click. Um, that should give us the formula we need. Okay, so now if I type in a maturity goal, so I want to reach $1.5 million. You can see it automatically fills in with the number of years that we would need in order to reach that goal. And we can change it, so 1 million will happen in 28.3 years um, if I keep this principle and interest rate. Okay, for value after two years, um, I'm going to um, paste in what we had last time. Um, so that's our formula um, here up top. I'm going to change our T to uh, shift click whatever the years to mature are. Um, so now whatever you type in for years to mature, it will tell you what the value is after that many years. Okay, so if I show everything, here's what we've got. Um, I can name this account whatever I want. Um, so this is my retirement account number one. Um, and we'll say we put $35,000 into that retirement account at an 8% interest rate, compounded four times per year. So you can see after 30 years, um, this account is worth um, $376,000. If I wanted it to reach a million dollars, I'd have to wait 42.3 years. If I want to know how much it's going to be worth after a set number of years, I can type however many years I want into this field, and it will give me my answer here. So after 13 and a half years, this account will be worth $101,000. Okay, any questions on what we did so far? No. Okay. Um, so we can get a lot more fancy with this um, if we want to. Um, I'm going to show you a finished Excel document I'm using to help me with my video game at the moment. <laughs> um, so this is for a game called Dungeons and Dragons Online. 
Um, it's got a number of quests that you can do um, on different difficulty levels, and based on what difficulty level you have, it gives you a number of favor points um, towards that particular um, house. So it's like a number of reputation you get for completing quests for that group. Um, so I've programmed this document um, so that um, I can click on this quest um, and uh, pull down from a field and say I completed this on hard difficulty. That'll automatically update um, how much um, total favor that I have earned, um, how much total favor I've lost, that's how much I did not earn because I did it on a lower difficulty. Um, and then up here at the top of the page, um, it also updates how many quests I've done for that particular um, group and how much favor that I've earned so far. Um, okay. So that's one way I use this in my personal life, um, is just to um, organize stuff that I'm planning on doing. So um, I don't have a lot of time in the game now that I'm an adult. Um, but I can plan it out and kind of make the most of the time that I do have. Um, I don't actually do this myself, um, but we've been talking about short-term investments um, earlier. Um, we mentioned um, if it was possible to figure out um, when a stock price was concave up or concave down, then we can use that to uh, make better informed decisions about when to buy and when to sell, right? Yes. Um, so in this DIS document, um, what I've done is I've taken the adjusted closed price um, of the past 250 days of Disney. Um, I um, created a scatter plot of that price. Um, so that's all of these blue dots is just what the price was at the end of each day. Um, and then I've created a best fitting function here in red um, that most closely approximates our data. So this is a six degree polynomial function. And you can see our R squared here is our strength of the correlation to the data set is pretty high at 0.87. Um, if you remember from pre-calculus, anything above 0.6 is good, is strong. Um, so we have a really strong relationship to what's happened historically to our data. Um, and we could use that to figure out um, whether our second derivative right now um, would we concave up or concave down? So for the past five days, um, in general, is our trend accelerating or decelerating? And we can use that to make our decisions for short-term stock purchases. So even though each individual day is bouncing up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, if we take a group of five days and compare that to the past 250 days, we can get a good idea of what's actually happening to the total function over time. Um, so I'm going to make this whole thing from scratch again, so you can see how I did it, um, in case you wanted to do that in the future. Um, so I'm going to open a new document, or actually, let's just download one. So let me break out of everything I've got open. Um, so I'm, on, I'm going to finance.yahoo.com. And we'll wait for load. Um, so over here on the right-hand side, um, you can look up a quote um, or up here if you know the symbol. Um, so I'm going to look for, um, I know DAS is Disney. Is Microsoft MSF or MST? I can't remember. Microsoft. It's not what I want. I'll try another one that I do know. So ABC for Google. Come on. <laughs> okay, it's 
actually not what I was looking for either. Um, there we go. G O O G. That's not what I expected. Um, so I'm going to go to um, historical data. It will create a massive chart for me. I'm a little bit slow at the moment just because I'm broadcasting, so give this a minute. Okay, so here's all of our data. Um, this should have an option to download. There we go. So it's just loading. Um, so I'm going to hit download. And that will download all of our data on Google as a CSV document. Um, so if I open that, um, here's all of Google's data for their um, open, high, low, and closing prices, and adjusted closing prices. Um, so I'm going to take their adjusted closing prices um, and just highlight that entire field. So here's 252 days worth of closing prices for Google. Um, and I want to insert um, a chart. Okay, so I'm going to go to scatter plot. Um, and we'll insert a scatter plot. So you can see um, here's all of their prices on the left side um, for days going all the way to 252 days. You can see there's a ton of points here. Um, let me see if I can make this bigger. So I'm just going to hold shift to keep that the same aspect ratio and we'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Um, all of these dots represent the adjusted closing price of um, Google's stock. Um, at different days. So going back 252 days ago. Okay, then I'm going to go over here to the plus sign where I can add chart elements. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add um, labels for our axes. Um, so if I double click this, um, I can change this to say this is the adjusted closing price in USD um, and down here is days before 5-19-2020 okay I'm also going to add a trend line Um, if you click the arrow on the side, um, we'll be able to change that um, to different types of best fitting functions. So instead of just a linear function. Um, so I'm going to go down to more options um, and give us a polynomial instead um, with the highest order of magnitude that I can. So it's a six degree polynomial. Okay, then I'm going to change the color of that to something I can see a little bit better. So I used red last time. Um, so here's a dark red for our trend line. Um, and maybe make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to display the equation and the R squared on the chart as well. Okay, I'm also going to change that dash type to a solid so it's a little bit easier to see. And you can see what's happening to my curve right now. Okay, then I'm going to move what we just created a little, little bit down. Um, I might give this a, a fill effect so that I don't have to see the lines in the middle of that. Um, so we'll do a solid fill of just some white space um, with a black border maybe. Okay, so you can see what the equation was in the R squared. Um, so this is our best fitting six degree polynomial function to our data. Okay, I still have that linear function in the back, so I'm going to go ahead and click that and just delete it. So I don't have the general trend line anymore. Um, that leaves me with just the red function, which is our polynomial that we could 
essentially um, derive or integrate or do anything else you want to using our um, calculus rules that we learned in class this year. Okay, then we'll give it a title too. So this is um, Google stock price last 252 days. Okay, um, we've got options for different chart formats if we want. So if I hovered over these, we could change the colors, maybe yeah. uh, make it easier to see for a presentation um, if you've got a projector or something. Yeah. Um, or you could do it manually over here. Um, okay, so if I was actually going to use this, um, just looking at the chart, um, I can see that I've been on a general increasing trend lately um, for the past yeah. um, about 50 days or so. Um, it does look like um, we're nearing the um, we're nearing the point where our concavity is about to change, though, um, which tells me um, this would probably be a good point to um, start looking at selling off your Google stock prices over the next couple days, um, based on the trend that we've seen earlier. Um, but isn't isn't the dates from zero fifty from fifty to hundred? So it's like always the charge is the concave up is like fifty days or uh yeah, we've been concave up for about fifty days now. Um but just looking at this um, it looks like our acceleration is starting to slow down um, at around the 250 day mark. So um, the rate at which we were increasing was increasing. Um, I feel like we've hit our point of inflection somewhere around here. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, That's so that means it. if we did hit a point of inflection here, um, and that means the future would look something like this, where we would be concave down for a couple days. Um, that means we'd hit a maximum coming up at some point in the future and then start going down. All of this is still guesswork predictions, but um, when we're looking at um, the whole function of 250 days to make our predictions, um, you can see this is a little bit easier to make predictions for using our red line than it would be with just our scatter plot. Um, with our scatter plot, you can see over the past couple of days our stock price has actually gone down. But our general trend for this function um, has been going up if you look at the past 50 days total. Um, and if you were to look at the past 50 days and fit a curve to it, um, our concavity, um, even though we're still in general increasing, um, our concavity has actually changed from positive to negative. And that gives me um, a better marker that we could use to predict what's going to happen to our stock price potentially. All of this is still guesswork, um, but it's a little bit better of a guess than just saying the stock is increasing or the stock is decreasing, maybe. Yeah. All right, um, so that's some basic Excel functions. Um, any questions on anything? No, that was good. Cool. But uh, I have uh, some questions from the homework last one. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and stop.